Hello everyone, welcome back. Uh, today we're gonna be comparing Red Dot and Magnifier versus LPVO. Um, so this here is the Hollow Sun 510C with the HMX 3X magnifier, three times magnifier behind it. And this is the Primary Arms PLX 128 by 24. So this is a PLX series. This is a $1,500 LPV. Okay, so I did do a video on this subject about two years ago, um, and since that time, I've had I've done a lot of work with the with the LPVO. You know, also a lot more work with the, with the red dot with the magnifier. Um, and I'm, I'm just going to, I want to add some additional information uh, that I think you guys are going to be useful. Now, this whole summer, uh, I spent, uh, I, I think I did something like, I don't know, at least 20 videos on some specific uses of the LPVO. And I'm going to link a playlist in the comment section below so you guys can check out that playlist. Okay, So that's going to have a lot of the detail of a lot of the things that we're talking about. So <laughs> the last time I did this video... My general opinion was that the red dot and the magnifier is going to be better than your LPVO. Uh, and the primary reason was like kind of focusing on the eye, eye box and eye, you know, eye relief. Uh, the fact that the, that the red dot is just a lot easier to use in an oh shit type of situation. Um, but the, after you know, having spent a lot of time this summer working up with the LPVOs, my opinion now is that, yeah, the red dot with the magnifier, that's your general purpose rifle. The LPVO with the right reticle, right, and that's really important, it's got to have the right reticle. The LPVO is your special purpose rifle. And we're going to be talking about some of those special purposes uh, in, this, in this video. So, let me first demonstrate um, why the, the red dot with the magnifier uh, you know, is going to dominate it for most situations, okay? So in most situations, let's say in the combat self-defense type of situation, there's a good chance that we are shooting on the run, unconventional positions. So especially you have a big window optic like this, okay? You're able to basically quickly come up, get the target. Uh, you're able to, even if I'm holding the gun all the way out here, right? Like not even shoulder, right? I can get on target. Right, and I can I can make hits. Uh, I can do moving and shooting. Okay. By the way, I am using a 22 conversion bolt. So it'll be, yeah, the reason is because I'm shooting the steel fairly close here uh, at about what is this? About uh, 10 yards. So don't be surprised if we get a few jams during the demonstration. So. The nice thing about the red dot with the magnifier is I can lighten up this rifle really fast, right? So I can take this off at night. I got a much lighter rifle. This is a 3X. If I decide that I need more magnification, I got a Vortex 6X over here, okay? Uh, so we've got that flexibility and we can get this out fairly quickly when we need it. Okay, and flip it to the side, flip it back on. So flipping this to the side, getting on target, flipping it back up when we need magnification is always going to be faster than working with this throw lever. Okay, so right now I am in 1x. If I need magnification, I got to go there. Okay, magnified. Okay, so that's always going to be slower which a lot of times is the reason why you'll see people that even though they got an LPVO that goes all the way down to one power, uh, they end up putting like a, um, a, a, a micro optic at the 45 or piggybacking it because it's just a lot faster to turn the rifle to the side rather than, uh, you know, play with the throw lever back and forth, okay? So, so if we're going to be using an LPVO that weighs a pound and a half, okay, uh, we want something more than just magnification uh, and a bullet drop compensator, right? Because I can get that, I can get that out of the red dot with the magnifier, okay? Um, you know, I got my magnification, I got my circle dot in there, okay? I know my holdovers with the dot. Um, I even have other red dots like the, the, the Holosun 503G 
that has a bull drop compensator built into the red dot. So if it's just a bull drop compensator and a, um, um, a you know and a magnifier that I'm looking for, I can get it here at a much you know much lighter and a lot more flexible in terms of I can just completely remove the magnifier. Okay, when we go to the when we go to the LPVO, okay, immediately I run into eye relief and eye box issues. Uh, and that includes like the really expensive ones. Like this is a $1,500 one, Japanese glass, all that, you know, all the, the bells and whistles, right? But still, if I'm like up here, like, you know, it's really hard for me to line up a shot, okay? Because when I get up there, I see shadow. Okay? So I gotta, it takes longer if I'm in an unconventional position or if I'm, again, moving and shooting. It, take, it takes longer. Now you might say, why would I be moving and shooting? Why not stationary behind concealment? Well, picture a situation where you're, like, you're in a truck that's moving or a car or a helicopter or something that's moving. Uh, so the big window, especially the big window optic over here, uh, it's going to allow you to move and shoot or be in the vehicle that's moving uh, and put hits on target. Okay? Now what I want to do... I'm gonna separate the upper and lower so I can get behind the camera and show you, basically allow you guys to see what I'm seeing. All right, so if I get behind the camera, right? All right, so there's no shadow, right? You can see how I come up. Right, and again, I'm looking at this behind the camera. You can see how I'm fairly easy able to find it. And imagine if you're now in a truck or something that's moving, right? You can see how you can, you know, you you you, you can track and stay on target even with 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 the movement. Okay, so let's try that with the LPVO. So I'm in one X. So you're seeing shadow, right? So it's going to take a lot more. Now we also have a focusing issue on the camera. So right now I have the illumination off. Let's cheat this a little bit. There we go. I'm going to focus it. Let's let's cheat this a little bit by putting the illumination on. The problem with the illumination is. You can't depend on it because batteries run out. Now, even though this has auto off, auto on, right? It has like, uh, go to, it goes to sleep and it shakes awake. The problem with that is if you are, if you have it on, on your back or if you're in the car and you're moving, it's never going to go to sleep. So eventually you're going you're gonna to basically run out your battery. So this does have these posts on the sides to help guide you to the center. But clearly, you know, and especially, well, let's try that moving situation again, right? So let's say you're moving, and let's you know, say you're in a truck that's moving or something, or in a helicopter that's bouncing around, right? You could clearly, this one was a lot easier if you're bouncing around. All right, so see, here you're bouncing around, right? That's a lot easier to work with, right? So I don't think that there's, I don't think it's, Hard to deny, right, that the big window red dot uh, is going to be bad, be better for most situations, okay, for most situations. Um, take this off. So let's discuss now what situations would the, uh, would, would the LPBO be better in, okay? So let me show you, let me show you guys the LPBO again. Uh, again, it's in one power. All right, so and if I zoom you up, I can line it up. All right, so now I got you guys in A power. So now you're seeing a different image. And I have this printed out to show you, but I just want to show you what it looks like for real, not just on paper.
Right, let's go back to one power. All right, so I've got to print out of this. Let's talk about where the LPVO would be better. Okay, so like I said, you at the beginning of the video, you got to have the right reticle uh, in order to be able to make use of it. Okay, so the red dot with the magnifier will give us magnification, will give us a bull drop. What I want from an LPVO, okay, I want to be able to range estimate because the bullet drop compensator that you might have, let's say, in your red dot is not going to be very useful uh, if you don't know the distance to the target, okay? So this has a built-in, uh, when you zoom up to 8 power, okay, what you're doing is you're going to see this, which I think you might have caught a glimpse of. So this has, over here, it has, this has a an auto ranger. So if you're, if you put the foot of, let's say you're looking at a man, right? His foot goes there, his head goes there, okay? Uh, that's going to put him at 300 yards, okay? If his foot is here and his head is there, that's going to put him at 800 yards, okay? Now, if you can only see him, let's say, from the belt up, then you basically put it in the middle. So if his belt is here and his head is over there, that's 400 yards. So now this allows you to, um, to auto range, right, to figure out what your distance is off the height of a man, which is the thing that you would most likely be shooting at, right, if you're in a combat situation. Now, once you figure that out, now you've got your built-in bullet drop compensator here. So uh, with the 50-yard zero, right, so at 50 yard, if I have a 50-yard zero, uh, I, my, my um, you know, I got a second zero at 200 yards, which is right at the chevron. Then the top of that spine right there above my finger, that's 300 yards. This line here is 400 yards, that's 500 yards, that would be 600 yards, okay? Um, which is the furthest I've been able to get with that rifle uh, and be effective on target. Now, the, the, the width of these lines over here also correspond to the average uh, width of a man's shoulders, which is about 18 to 20 inches. So, so once you auto range here, you can then order, also auto range these little bars here to the width of a man's shoulders, and that'll give you a confirmation, uh, or, or for example, you might also just be able to, that might also be the only thing that you're able to see, the, the, you know, because he might be hiding something and all you can see him is his chest, right? All right. Now, let's say you can only see his head, right? All right. So let's say you got somebody that's peeking above a table or a car or something, all you can see the head. Well, what you do is you know that these lines here correspond to a man's shoulder. So you can basically, you put the head on top of the shoulders here, and you see what looks the most proportional, right? So if, if you use this one over here and you see that he's got like a little pin head, well, that doesn't look proportional. So you go down to one of these lines over here. Or if you're using this line and it looks like he's got a big lollipop head, then you know you got to go further up here, okay? So, th so, so th this system here allows us to uh, you know, to, to figure out what the, the range is so we know which line to use of the bullet drop compensator. Now, these little dots here on the side, these are your wind holes. Uh, so that's your, um, that's your five, I, basically with my finger, at, at edge of the line there, that's five, 10, 15, 20, right? Down here, let's say that's at, uh, at 600 yards, five, 10, 15, 20. So you're using these lines over here for your wind holes. And I, I did a separate video on how to judge the wind. If you look over here on these trees, I have wind ribbons that I've hung up. And I did a separate video on how to, because you gotta calibrate your wind ribbons. Whatever you happen to be using, right? Whether it's a string or a ribbon or a rope, uh, what you do is you find a day that there's like no wind and you just dangle it on the mirror, right? Whatever length you're gonna be using, whether it's four inches or six inches, you dangle it from your mirror, right, on your car, right, or your truck, whatever you drive, and you're going to drive at five miles, and you're going to see, like, how, you know, how far it moves, then 10 miles, 15, 20, all right, and you're going to get a sense of where your, you know, what your wind ribbons do at different wind speeds, right? So that's the easiest way to figure out, to calibrate your wind, wind ribbon. So these pink ribbons that I have hanging on the trees over here, right, when they're hanging straight down, that's zero, okay? Then, you know, I got five, I got three, five, seven, and ten, okay? So all the way out here is ten, all the way down is zero, and then I just divide it into four. So it's it's zero, three, five, seven, or seven and a half, 
and 10, right? So you got you got to know what your wind is so that you can use these wind holes, right? And then the way it works is if it's diagonal, you use a full value. I'm sorry, if it's if it's horizontal across, you use a full value. If it's diagonal, uh, you use a half value, right? So if you determine that you've got, let's say, a five mile per hour wind, but it's coming in diagonally, well, then you just cut that in half and you say, okay, I got I got like a two and a half or three mile per hour wind, right? So you, so, so you need a reticle that allows you to range estimate, okay? Allows you to have a, has a bull drop compensator, um, uh, has wind holds on it, but also you want to have mill lines, right? So if these lines over here, right? These are, you know, from there to there, that's 10, okay? So so this reticle, when you zoom out, you see this. So here's the thing with the, with the reticle. Uh, if it's a first focal plane, right? First focal plane. When you're in one one X, you're gonna see this image, right, or, or something like this. You see one image in one X. So with this one here, with this uh, uh, M8 Raptor, right, from Primary Arms, I basically see a duplex reticle. All this stuff is still there, but it has shrunk down, so it's tiny in the middle. And I see this du duplex reticle with these posts that guide me to the center. The horseshoe is there, okay, and that's supposed to guide me to the center. Um, and then when you zoom in, basically this stuff here disappears out of your view, field of view, and you folk, and, and basically you zero in on this, and you see this. So when you're in in one X, you see this, and as you zoom up to your max magnification, you're going to see something that looks like that. Um, and that this is really important because a lot of times I have looked, I have seen reticles right in scopes that are first focal plane, right? But what happens is when you when you zoom in. You see this, right? Right. So you got you have the ability to to do bullet drop and you know range estimate. But then when you zoom out, you don't have any of the stuff on the outside. So all you have is like this tiny little dot in the center, and it's really hard to find that tiny little dot. Okay. So uh, you know just like with your optics, like this one over here with the polish on, right? I'm using a circle dot, right? So you want to have a reticle on, on your red dot. Where are you? That has a circle dot that guy, you know, that helps you find it and get on target. Uh, because if I just had a two M way dot, it would be a lot easier. So right now, even though it's out of focus and it's blurry, you can still you can still uh, see it, even though it's it's blurry and out of focus because it's a sixty five M way circle with the dot in the center and it still works. So the same deal goes with uh, LPVO. Okay, when you're in one power. You don't want to see just a dot in the center because you're not going to be able to find that dot. Right? You want to be able to see these posts out there, like that, like that, like that, that will guide you to the center. So even if, let's say, your 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 battery died and you don't, you can't see that horseshoe, you can barely see that horseshoe. Well, these posts here will guide you to the center. So if you've got a man that's standing over here, you just basically use these lines to center him up, and you can still take your shot. So that's a a, a really important thing with. With your with your LPVO, okay. Especially if it's a first focal plane LPVO, you need uh, you know, you need to be able to you know, when you're in one power, right? You got you need something to drive you to the center, like these posts over here. Um, I've had LPVOs where all you had was like a little dot, and I couldn't see it, and I ended up getting rid of those because those weren't very useful. So so if you've got an LPVO that just has when you're in one next, all you see is a little dot that you can hardly find. That's not going to be very useful, right? If it, if you don't have the ability to range estimate, that's not very useful, right? Just go back to using the red dot, right? Um, the other thing that's really good about uh, about this type of a system, uh, first of all, you've got you've got mill lines here, so I can range estimate other things uh, besides besides a person, right? So for example, all doors, most doors are about eighty inches tall, right? Uh, most trucks are like tractor trailers are 75 feet long, 13 and a half feet wide. Okay, uh, the vertical stabilizer on most commercial airplanes uh, is about 55 feet tall. Okay, most commercial airplanes are about 210 feet long, right? Like a 747, 787s. Uh, so these are like standard, uh, standard things that I can use to range estimate. So I, I did a video. Um, where basically I was range estimating trucks that were running back and forth across the bridge, you know, using these mill lines over here, right? So look for that in the uh, in, in, in the playlist that I'm going to link uh, in the comments below. So I, I want to be able to range estimate 
other things besides just a person okay uh, the other thing I the other way I can use this I can use this to lead targets okay so uh, so for one thing um the way this reticle here is designed is if you got a runner right if he's most people run at let's say around eight nine miles per hour if he's running if you lead him on the edge over here right uh, and you take your shot, basically he's going to run into it. So you take your shot, and by the time if he's running, let's say, in this direction, you lead him on the edge over here, you know, you, you should contact, make contact with him um, a, as he runs into it. Now, you may need, you're probably going to need to take more than one shot. You'll be like, boop, 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 and he's going to run into it. But this, this leading edge here uh, gives you an idea of, like, where to start. Now, I did a video where I'm, I'm also leading other things, right, where I'm leading, like, cars and people on bicycles uh, and, and, and jet skis and boats, okay? And obviously, I, in that video, I took the scope off the rifle, and I'm just using the, the scope. So the way I was doing that is uh, I basically I had zoomed back to, like, three power, uh, let's go, well, let's go back to this. So I had zoomed back to three power, but just to give you an example, like let's say I had a, a jet ski or something that was running across. What I would do is like I would, I would start off here with my jet ski, uh, and then I would pick up a, a point, let's say over here, right? So, so, so basically I would go like, you know, you know, he would start here and I would do like one, two. I would see how far the jet ski would go in about two seconds, right? So it might be one, two, he might get all the way out here, right? Or it might be one, two, he only goes to there. Or one, two, he only gets over here. So however he far he gets in those two seconds, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to lead him on the other side from that point, right? So if I determine it's like one, two, he gets to this line over here, then, okay, the opposite line is over here that matches up to it. So as soon as I'm leading him, as soon as he crosses that line, Okay, I start taking my shots, and then he in those you know he, he's going to connect. Um, and now the other thing that you do is you take a bunch of shots, like boop 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 boop, um, because then what happens is he kind of runs into your shot. So maybe one of your sh the one shot won't hit him, but maybe one of the other shots will hit him. But at least you have a place to start, right? So that you can lead the target. So in order to do those things, um, you need a a complex reticle like this, right? Um, if you look up here. You look up here, I have over here like for a 75 foot trailer, right? This is using the mill lines over here. I've already pre-estimated that, let's say um, a, a, a tractor trailer uh, that is 13 and a half feet tall, right? Because that's, that's what most tractor trailers are. Uh, at, two, at 200 yards, it's gonna be 22 mils high, right? So it's actually out of the field of view of this, right? But you know, at four, at 400 yards, it's gonna be 11 mils high, right? So uh, basically for 11 mils, from here to here, right? I know he's at 400 yards. So these are, I mean, this is just to give you guys an example of all the things that I want to be able to do, okay? For the extra pound and a half that I have on this rifle, okay? So this, this is why this is a special purpose uh, uh, rifle. Once this takes an LPD on it, it's a special purpose rifle. I want to be able to do all those things that I just uh, mentioned. I don't want to just be using this for, you know, as a magnifier, or you know, right? Because if I'm going to do that, I'm, I might as well just use the other one over there, the red dot with the magnifier, and I've got a lot less weight than I'm carrying. So a couple of things for you guys to, to think about. Um, I have mentioned this in other videos, but I kind of wanted to just do a summary video um, that kind of summarizes everything. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you guys to go look at the comments section below where I'm going to uh, link the playlist. And then you can go through the different videos that I did over summer and you can, you know, see more details of all the stuff that I just uh, mentioned to you guys. Okay? So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, drop some comments below and I'll talk to you all soon.